Alrighty. Check it out. I'm ready to put down flooring up here. I'm going to start in the main room. And uh, I need to square that 2x4 up, get a couple screws in it, because there's going to be a closet back in there. So I don't want to put the floor down, then put the wall on it. The floor needs to be able to move and wiggle. So this floor on this side of the 2x4 is going to be separate than the floor in the closet. So anyway, <clears throat> I uh, chose to go with this brand and this color because I scored 10 boxes of it for free. 70 bucks a box. So 700 bucks. And I'm not really fussy and picky on colors. So, uh, yep, there was uh, 10 boxes less I have to get. So I just started gathering up some more of this stuff. So to put this stuff down, here's your recommended tools. Tape measure, a square, utility knife, tapping block, soft-faced hammer, and some quarter-inch spacers. Well, I don't have quarter-inch spacers, but I'll show you how we're going to make some quarter-inch spacers. My rubber mallet, it's a MIA, so I'll show you how we're going to get around that. Tap and block, I'll show you that. It also doesn't show you the draw bar, so I'll show you that. Utility knife, I guess that's how they think you cut this stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to use the chop saw. Tape measure, yeah, maybe you need it. Square, probably a good idea. So anyway, you want to start in the left-hand corner. So this is going to be the left-hand corner once this is secure. So we're going to start here and work our way out and to the right. And the reason I have to start in this corner is because when I go through the partition wall, um, through that doorway, I need to be able to click in to get on that other floor. So if I start in the corner that's over there and come this way, the tongue and groove is going to be backwards. And I have to be trying to fit in underneath. You'll see how this stuff goes together in a second. So we have a groove and a groove and over here we have a tongue and on the other end we have a tongue this one piece is 10 bucks they come seven in a box so you don't really want to be screwing up too much on the bottom of this you have rubber underlayment, so you don't have to buy foam. The older original click flooring did not have this, so you had to buy foam rolls, lay that down, tape all the joints up, get it flat, make sure there wasn't any crinkles in it. Um, those boxes of flooring were cheaper, you got more in them, but then you had the expense of you had to go buy the foam. That wasn't cheap and all the work putting that down. Here it all is in one box. Okay, so this says to do a quarter inch spacing all the way around the perimeter. You don't want this real tight. This is called a floating floor. The reason being it needs to be able to move and shift around a little bit. So you can buy something it doesn't have to be exactly a quarter i mean if it's like a little bigger or whatever that's fine but don't nail this stuff down i've seen that um <laughs> this actually this exact same flooring it was put down the joints were not hammered together and then the little nails were put in along the joints to hold it down that is not how you do this stuff So anyway, uh, for my quarter inch spacers, like I was talking about before, 
some of the older style flooring that doesn't have the rubber on the bottom. Here's a chunk of it. So it's yeah, roughly a quarter of an inch thick. So I just throw it in the chop saw, chunk off a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And I can stick it along the ends and along the edge of the wall here. And that will be my spacers. Pro tip. No, not really. I figured it out the hard way. Before you cut a piece of this that has a rubber on it with a chop saw, make sure the chop saw is not near a wall, pointing at the wall. It spits. And it's going to spit rubber bits up on your wall. Yeah, I figured that out. So now I have it pointing out toward the middle of this floor. So as I uh, get the flooring over this way, that I can vacuum up the mess. All right, so backing up a little bit here. This is just a stopper for the moment. It is square to the wall, and that piece is square for the closet. So eventually that piece is gonna come out. I'm not gonna have a two by four going into the closet. I have to step over. But for now, it's just gonna be a guide. So as you can see, I can butt up to it. And when I get out by it, I can run down the length of it. And when I get ready to build the wall, I just gotta pull a couple screws out and then that'll become the base plate and I can put my studs in for the wall. So there's one of them spacers. There's another one of those spacers. You want one right down the corner because I'm gonna be sliding stuff this way. I'm gonna be knocking stuff that way. And we've got another one right here in this joint. Now, the reason I get a screw in it is because it has a gap there and I've already dropped the one downstairs. So if you don't have a spacer at the joint, like if you have one back here and then you start putting any force this way, you're going to knock this thing open. So every joint on your first plank, you can see another one up there ready to go. Every joint on your first first row you want to have a spacer in there so that when you hammer against it you don't start knocking things open all right so let's get the second row started okay second row is started so this is a half a plank this is where i cut it so this edge will not connect into anything else now but we're fine butted against here so we had a groove here and a tongue here, overlaid it. You'll notice here we have a gap, right? So the floor I mentioned that was not put together right, that was just laid down and nailed, this is how it was done. Literally just got laid down and then put a nail, put a nail, laid the next one down, put a nail, put a nail. Don't do that. All right, so... We can slide it down to the left just a little bit. There we go. If this isn't even here, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Because we're going to have an, a wall put here. Sheet rock's going to come down. There's going to be a mop board, all that. So no big deal. And this wedge is going to come out just like the other wedges around the edge when this is done. So to nail this, yeah, nail this stuff, to knock this stuff together, one of the special tools, they just say having a, like a wooden block, which is not gonna do you much good. Here's one of the special tools, kind of a hockey puck looking thing with a groove in it, okay? Because if you had just a wooden block, with a flat edge, just put it on there and started hammering. Look what you got. You're gonna screw up this groove. And then you're not gonna be able to click in your next piece. So what this does, and it's a one-way fit, notice it's thicker on the top, thinner on the bottom. Oh, I'm gonna pick it up just a little bit. Get the floor up just a little bit. Set it in there. 
So notice what we have now. There we go. So now when you hammer on here, the force is not touching this. And your force is hitting this upper plank and then the plank below it. Makes sense, right? So then you can use a regular hammer. See it going together. So now I'm just gonna slide my block up a little bit more. Always make sure it's seated in right. And just a few taps. There we go. A nice tight joint there now. That's the way you're supposed to put it together, not nails. So now we got a couple. Oh, this is hard on the knees in the back, I can tell you. Now well, we got a couple. You can see how this is kind of going. You have a groove there and you have a groove by my finger and then a groove here. So the tongues of the next ones go over top of the grooves and hammer down in, which is what we just did right here. Once you do two or three of these, it's pretty simple. So that is why, oh, gee, get out of here. That is why they say start at the left hand corner and go that way. So it just goes together, right? So if I had started, walk over here. If I had started in this corner, which could also be a left-hand corner, so think this through with me here, okay? So if I started here and started going this way, I could get this main room done, yes, no problem. But then what would happen Got some planks laying over here. But then what would happen when I get to this point? I laid these down so you can see. You get to this point. If we started where I just came from, everything's gonna be facing this way. So you'd be looking like this. Here's your tongue. There's your groove. Well, how are you gonna get in underneath this, shy of picking it up? Because this would be clicked in like so. You'd have to get in underneath this one. And don't mind the mess over in this room. This is the next room to get done. Um, after I sand the sheet rock, prime, paint this room, I can do the floor here. So I have to be doing every single plank trying to get in underneath. Yeah, that's not going to go real well at all. Or what you have to do is you would have to just terminate it here in the wall. And then start in the left hand corner over there and bring it over here and put in the threshold. So that's more work. That's a threshold in the floor. I'd have to do the same thing over in here, too. But by doing it this way, starting in the left-hand corner. So this is, this is not the left-hand corner, okay? We're going to backtrack and come into this, and I'll show you that. That is the left-hand corner. So by going that way, working out, when I get over to this point, then we're going to start back in here. We're gonna come right back onto here, pick all this up, and go all the way over there, grab all that. Then, when we hit this point, and have to go through the wall, everything is going to be facing the way it is already. So, get flipped around. So it'll be facing this way. The groove is going right. So then when we go through the wall, whether it, you know, whether it lands like this, like this, like this, it doesn't matter. However it lands coming through the wall, the next piece can come in and 
click right into it like we are supposed to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some cutting and fitting, no big deal. And then we will start back in here, getting around through here and work our way right through here. And that's gonna like become the left hand corner and work out through here. And it's eventually gonna end over there. Makes sense, right? Work from eight o'clock to two o'clock. So, we'll lay down a few more planks going this way. Then I gotta come back here, start laying some down, cut that hole out. Okay, so there's your groove, there's your tongue. We're gonna do an end. This is critical. We're gonna make sure all this lines up. See if I can do this one handed. There we go. Let's see that, it's perfect. We've got a nice joint right there, okay? So this is where the rubber mallet would come in handy that I don't have. So I can use this or a piece of wood. Don't hammer out on here, you're gonna break it. But you can set it right on there somewhere because we got good surface here, good surface here. Set it right up there and then we're just gonna tap it down. These couple more taps. Kind of hard to do with one handed, you know. There we go, we're good right there. There, nice and smooth. So now we're ready to lay in this next piece. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna grab one here. Pile them right behind me. It's only one way fit. It's just like putting a puzzle together. So line up your ends, get your tongue in your groove. Should look pretty good at that point. Got a little bit of a, there we go. Got a little bit of a bulge right there. Before you sink her down, make sure we're still good up here. Yep, looking pretty good up here. knee on it so it doesn't bounce. Yeah, I gotta tap her that way a little bit. So we're gonna do what we did before and use the block, give it a few love taps, seat it in that way. And then if we need to, we're gonna do the same thing, tap it from the end. If we have to push it this way just a little bit, then we drive it down. Got some rush going tonight. Here's roughly half the hole for that register of the floor. You can cut it out with a jigsaw. I'm just using this. It's a reciprocating supersonic sonic crafter thing. This thing works awesome. I use it for a lot of different things. So I'm just going to use that to Zip that up with, lay it down. Okay, so here's what you want to pay attention to. Uh, manufacturer recommends minimum eight inches between each end, so between there and there. Fingertip to thumb is nine, so that kind of gives you a rough idea. So any, anywhere, anywhere in here is fine. So over here we've got 
three wide now. We've got a full, we've got a half, and a joint. We've got a full. Okay, then there's your joint. Then your next one will be up there. So we're staggered every half plank right now. So right here, you can get distracted, okay? Because we need to cut out the other half of this hole in here, just like that one, right? All right, yep, we're gonna do that. You know, we'll get it in there, we'll trace it, we'll measure it underneath, get it all drawn out, cut it out, and then we're gonna go, oh, well, crap. Because we're gonna line up here, right? <laughs> So then you have to do it all over again. So cut it in half first, because this needs to be your half point now. Then butt it up down here and trace it out. Okay, here's a way to cheat. So I, I have not hammered this together. It's just loosely fitting in there. It's pretty damn close. We're butted up here, so marked each edge. Now, how far in do we need to go? Well, you could try and reach in there with a tape measure, measure it, and then do it that way. Or we can just do this. Aha! And we can use a square. Oh, blank you out for a second. We can use a square, line it up, and we mark it. Now we're gonna do just square it all off, and we have it. Alrighty. The register fit the first time. How about that? So I haven't finished off the first row yet. Still ending right there. So I got a quarter inch spacer right there, and we're up against the wall right there. Wall's not perfectly straight, go figure. <laughs> Surprised it's that good. Hey, right. so looking back on it at the moment, you can see our staggering. All right, well, now we have to go backwards. Yeah, nothing to it, it's a piece of cake. But we can't start here and come out. We have to start here, figure out a width out to this corner. So wherever it's gonna meet there, come out to this corner, and then we're gonna have a narrow piece here coming back. It's not going to be full width. Okay? Because we need to keep all this the same out here. So I'll show you how we're going to get her done. So where the hammer is in the block, you've noticed we've got a full piece. Alright. So now we got to, like I said, we've got to work around the corner and get back that way. So if we lay a full piece in here, and if we notched this crap, let's say we notched out to meet up something like so. So this was gone. So this will click together, this will click together on a full piece. Here's what we've got up on this end. It's only like four inches. That's not enough. You can't cut that end. You can't cut this end because then it's not gonna link into this. So you have to cut that end. So here's how we can do this. The full piece will come out. my scrap for making wedges. Here's a piece that's a little bit less than half. 
<laughs> yeah, you caught me. I screwed up. <clears throat> A little bit ago, I screwed up cutting one. But the end that I cut off was a tongue end. So it won't link in going this way, right? Oh, sorry, going that way, it won't link in. So this is still a salvageable piece because this is what we're using to start with, right? So, I get it back in this floor before I actually put the stuff down. So we're gonna put a spacer in there. Actually, we'll do it now before we forget it. Plus it's good for demo. There's a spacer, there's a spacer. Boom, boom, quarter inch, quarter inch. Plus that's gonna affect the measurements too when the satchel gets cut. And now if we slide this back, that's where it's gonna land lengthwise, right? But we can't come out to here because then we have a big gap there. If we snug it up in there, then we have a big gap here. Well, you know, how do you fix this conundrum? It's simple, trust me, it's simple. We're working from this point. We'll get to that point. So what we're gonna do, is figure out our length. We're gonna have a longer run here than our, than our halves. And that is fine. That is absolutely fine. I mean, unless you've got, you know, Eagle Eye John up here inspecting, well, that one's off and that one's off by an inch. That one's off by three inches more than that one over there. Who gives a crap? Does it really matter? Nope. So lengthwise, here's what we can get. All right. That will fit. Then we're going to have to start up there, finish that, finish that, finish that, coming all the way across before we can carry this one all the way out and bring on the next row. Now, what about this? Stick it out, right? No problem. Once that's all fitted, notched out, we got a good fit there. All we got to do. is match up this edge, cut her off, that scrap, get rid of it. Keep this edge true. Then we're nice and straight for the next run. So let's get her done. Hopefully you can hear me over rush. So I've connected them together. I didn't hammer them together, I just connected them together. Got my spacer, got my spacer. So we, we need to know the true length out to this point, okay? So now we need to figure out where we're gonna notch it. So we need a straight edge. So I just line the straight edge up with these. So that's gonna hold it true. And it's gonna bring it right over to here. Get a pencil mark on it. So when this is all gone, all of this is gonna slide over to here. Now we just need to figure out what this is. So tape measure. From the top of that wood. Can I get down here? I'm gonna start on the one inch mark just because it's easier for a reference. So one inch to the top of the wood. See what we got? So subtract an inch. So we've got four and sliver over three quarters there. So that's what we need to notch out of here. So I'm gonna double check this two-handed, 
without looking through the camera and make sure I've got it right. Okay, I put another wedge right there. Just to make sure we're staying straight and true and we're not getting cockeyed. So I double checked it. This one on the left did suck in just a little bit. So from the top of this wood, we're not measuring down here. From the top of the wood to the top of this wood is exactly four and three quarter inches. Okay. So that's what we need to lose here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use two hands. So I'm gonna measure over four and three quarters, mark it. Go down the other end, four and three quarters, mark it. Get a straight line down there. And all that's gonna disappear. Well, it's notched out. See how we did. Well, that did not come out too bad at all. So now you can see how, how it went. That is our wider length, yep. Notch came out good. I had to throw a couple of cedar shingles in here. This, this could have been a little bit wider. Not a big deal, just shimmed it out a little bit so that it wasn't slopping around on these quarter inch wedges. Easy peasy. Get the next full plank in. So the best I could do right now was get another starter half in. I need to go down there and finish off that first row and start working these out. But from here on out, it's pretty easy sailing. I don't have holes. I don't have to do this again. Um, I don't have anything in my way, so they're gonna lay down pretty quick until I get over there. Probably not tonight, it's getting really late already. I have to go around those legs because those are nailed onto the floor. <laughs> I didn't feel like ripping that all apart, so I'll just go around it. Well, put a little more time in here and see if I can get some more accomplished. So these are the other ends of the plank from the half starter strips. Don't throw them away. Hang on to them. Because you might be able to use them when you get to this end. I'm gonna have a railing here. So, for example, I've already marked this. So right here is where I gotta cut it to reach the edge of the floor. So what I just showed you is this piece. Oh, sorry. What I just showed you is this piece over here. So you've got a cut edge here. Cut edge here doesn't matter because we're not adding on, right? And then this side is gonna be a starter strip down on the other end. So we're not throwing any of this away. So this piece I just cut off, there's the starter. It's roughly half again, give or take. And here's the chopped off piece like I showed you over in the corner. The ones I got in the corner just aren't quite long enough to do this yet. So now I'll seat this one into place, hammer it down. Now when I, maybe I get a full one in here, maybe I'm gonna end right here. We'll see how it goes. And I'll show you how we're gonna use up that other scrap and not just throw it in a trash can. Well, it's about 22.30, still going here. I'm trying to make sure I don't make any mistakes. Ten dollars a board on this. <laughs> so there's the two end scraps I showed you in the corner. Here we are on two ends. So let me see. <laughs> that one ain't gonna be long enough. That one definitely ain't gonna be long enough. Well, okay. 
Here's how we can do this. That's gonna leave you the left side on the end going that way. So, I have a pencil in my mouth. So here's what we can do. We're gonna take, yeah, we're gonna take the long one. I'm gonna take the long one here and sit it out here, mark it, cut it. Then that's gonna be trash. And then we're gonna use the short one over here. Nope, 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 we ain't because we got bad edge here. So we have we have to go the other way. So I gotta put that one there, cut it off, and then put this one in here and cut it off. Nope, that ain't gonna work either. <laughs> well, this is why I say, gotta pay attention. All right, so what we can do is, we definitely can put that one in. This one stays in the scrap pile for the time being. So we'll get that one in. Then what I'll do, on another starter strip down there as I'll figure out what I need to finish that off. And I'll make my starter strip just the opposite. So we'll get to that in a minute. There we go. Get it straightened out now. Just set it together there. Ran it out, marked it. So that's what we needed to finish that row. So then whatever the scrap is, <clears throat> this is my fake floor over here. I'm throwing boxes at the moment. So whatever the scrap is coming off here becomes a starter strip down on the other end somewhere. No waste. So I get rid of that other piece of scrap right there. So there it is. I only have a couple of little pieces left that I can't do anything with as far as flooring, but I'm not throwing it away because I might want it somewhere else or something else. Gaining chiropractor is going to have something to do when I get there again. Well, I'm about halfway done. Been six boxes to get halfway in this room. It's well after 11, little man's gonna be home in a few hours, so I gotta try and get a little bit of sleep. <sighs> yeah. What a difference the floor makes. Not looking at this environment and vomit anymore. It's starting to look so much nicer. Okay, you can kind of see how the tongue and groove works. The tongue's on the left, the groove's on the right, overlaps, locks right down into place. And this one's the same thing. Looks a little funky because the left one's a little bit longer than the right one. It's not a big deal. All this is going to get covered over in a fascia type board, and then it's going to be back in over top of this floor a little bit so you're not going to see any of this getting there